Welcome to Epitome Video Training. In this session we're going to be discussing registering a few extensions to the PBX. Part of the intention behind us doing these video seminars is to walk you, the dealer, through our recommended method of doing an install. And one of the steps that we recommend is regardless of how many extensions you're going to be installing for the network, uh, for the PBX, to start off with getting a few, we'll start with three extensions registered and the reason we want to do this is because registering extensions to the PBX is a fairly quick and uh, simple process. It's a fairly quick and simple process and you are the only resource basically needed. You don't have to talk to an IT guy, you don't have to call up any other vendors to make sure everything is functioning the way you you need it to. Um, so what we recommend is to get a few extensions registered. We're going to auto number them here. We're going to start with uh, 620 and we click auto number and you just you see it populates it here. Uh, the reason that we are going to only register a few is because we want to test when we're finished and make sure the phones are functioning the way we expect allowing you the dealer to move on to another part of your install perhaps something that might involve a third-party resource like an IT guy or calling the ISP or calling the SIP provider something that may take more time than it would to just get a phone registered this way you get the phones up, up on the network a few phones and as you see here I named one I gave it an email address and I'm not naming the others because the PBX will auto name them an important part that we want to do here is to set the device type because if you are going to use auto provisioning being a number of key presses at the phone so the phone will bond back to its extension on the PBX the correct phone model must be set so we click create and we have three extensions built and I click return to extensions as we go down through the list we'll see here 610 called person A 611 and 612 all gave themselves a name now if you are using a, an HD phone that would be a 210 220 320 330 410 or 620 the PBX has already set the correct DTMF mode being RFC 2833 if you are using uh, an IP 550 phone you will need to change this because the PBX will set all default DTMF for new extensions to RFC, the IP550 as a preferred DTMF of info. But we now have our three extensions built on the PBX. We go up to Auto Discovery. Um, before we go there, let me pop over real quick to our wiki. Um, the wiki here, wiki.epitome.com, you can come here and click under HD Phones Phone Configuration. And this is going to walk you through the three different methods for provisioning a phone. The auto provisioning method, which is a number of key presses at the phone, the auto discovery method, and the manual method. We don't recommend manual if you can do either auto provisioning or auto discovery. It's much more efficient and a preferred method, less chance for human error. Um, today, due to the format that we're using, I'm going to use the auto discovery method. So I'm going to scan the network here. What the network scan does is, as it sounds, it scans the entire network. You're going to scan the entire local net that the PBX is connected to, discovering every device that is on the network and its MAC address and its IP address. Uh, because this is a demo system we're showing you, there don't happen to be any phones that are connected to it directly, and so we're not showing any IP addresses. These are in memory. These are the MAC addresses of phones that are assigned to extensions currently. Um, as you can see there are no computers or anything it's just a couple of phones that's because the advanced filter settings under view settings advanced filter settings is set to show these types only if you want to see everything set it to none click filter only and it's going to show you every single device on the network we filter it so it shows astro phones and epitome devices natively by default because that's what you really need to look at and that way your display isn't cluttered with a lot of extra information um, but Let's say we want to make these particular phones. We want to make this one 610. We want to make this one 611. And we want to make this one 612. So we get all those set. We put in check marks next to the extensions themselves. And we go up to the Commands tab and click the Assign, Configure, and Restart button. When you do this, three actions take place. Assign means that the 
MAC address of the phone is being paired up with the extension and that's how we create the config file. Configure means the PBX is going to communicate to the phone and it's going to tell it I am your configuration server, here is my IP address and then it's going to send a restart command. Every time a phone restarts it is going to query its configuration server which at this point has been set to the PBX and it's going to ask it do you have a configuration file that matches my MAC address? If you do I will download it over TFTP. It will also ask do you have a firmware file that is updated compared to the version I, the phone, am using. If it does, then the phone will download that after the config file and that will result in a reboot of the phone. This process could take up to 10-15 minutes. Be patient. If it's taking longer than you expect, just give us a call here at Tech Support and we'll troubleshoot with you and find a solution to the problem. But for the most part, the phone installation as a you know pairing a phone to an extension on the PBX is a pretty straightforward process. Um, so what I typically do after I send my commands and the page comes back to idle is go to reporting monitoring. And this is going to give you a snapshot of your SIP network. Being a demo system, as you can see, there's a lot of extensions built. Only one is currently registered right now. I know it's registered because it's in green, it has an IP address, and it has a status of OK with a listing of the number of milliseconds it is taking for a ping to round trip to that phone. This happens to be a remote phone. I can tell by its IP address. Once you have your three phones up on the network, regardless of how many total phones you're going to be installing, it is now our recommendation to test. You're going to make a call from phone A to phone B and then you can transfer from phone B to phone C. You can do the same thing with park. Call from phone A to phone B, park it at phone B, retrieve that parked call from phone C. Another good test to make would be to call into the voicemail from each phone. Enter in the, the voicemail pin. If it lets you into the mailbox, you know that the DTMF is working correctly. And by default, if you haven't changed it, the voicemail pin is going to be the same as the extension number, so it makes it nice and easy to test that. Once you have your three phones up, you've tested them, we're going to be moving on to the next video here and uh, walking you through, let's see, it will be remote phones and then we'll talk about trunking and we'll talk about inbound and outbound routing in the next couple of video sessions. Basically just trying to walk you through what we've found to be an efficient and functional way to do a install. So we'll see you during the next video.